there was actually a point when I was in college with a buddy of mine where we took one for a test drive. And I remember, and he reminds me of this all the time. He's like, you remember when we did that? And you're sitting in there and go, why would anybody buy this? This thing is stupid. What is Honda thinking? Like they're, they're, this is the dumbest vehicle ever. Thanks Blake for meeting up and uh, being willing to chat about uh, your kind of element journey. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hey, I didn't expect this. So thanks. Thanks for, for inviting me. So what was the context when you were like first even looking at cars and it ended up with an element? When I first account encountered the element, I was probably a teenager or something. I remember the, the TV commercials, like the, you know, there was that crab and like, it was, it was, they were, they were kind of odd. And I remember at that time um, thinking it was really cool. Cause it was like, you know, you could, you know, lay down the, the seats and you could throw your your uh, wetsuits in there you'd spray it out which turns out you can't but I, I i couldn't afford it at that time and even even when they were um producing at 2011 like, like there's no way i could could afford this thing and so i was uh i was a subaru owner i had a bunch of subarus a forester and a and a uh, an outback anyway i moved out to bc and my forester just died and I needed a vehicle. So my buddy was like, dude, you should look at the Honda Element. Like it's, it's got everything that you are looking for. At that point, I didn't have any kids. So the two seats in the back didn't really matter um, or no seats in the back. And, uh, you know, it was super practical. Like, you know, the fact that you could take the seats and roll them and put them up on the side. Again, you could sleep in it and all that stuff. And so I went to Calgary and uh, picked up this, this Honda element, I was living in uh, Kelowna and I would do a lot of, uh, a lot of skiing in, in Revelstoke, but, you know, being a, a, a partially broke 20 something, I couldn't afford to sleep in hotels. So yeah, I built the, built a bed for it. And, uh -huh. uh, and, you know, I drove that thing around for quite, like hundreds of kilometers, hundreds of thousands of kilometers. I drove it across the country um, from BC to Northern Ontario and even down to Southern Ontario, like a handful, huh. just so much. How many uh, K's were on it when you, when you first got it? That one. So I've had two, I've had oh. two, this is the thing. So that, that one, I can't, I can't remember, but when I got rid of it, it was in like 350,000. Yeah. You know? And you know, the reason that I got rid of it was because I had had like a minor accident with it. Um, so it was in, you know, somewhat rough shape on the front, the windshield was cracked and there was, there were all these things were just kind of like coming up and it was a 2005, but anyway, so that one, basically we had to let it go. And I remember like, um, when the, the, the wrecker came to pick it up, he came, picked it up with his forks and just drove down the road with it, like on, on his forks and you know, it, was, it was a small town and, you know, I took the, the tires off it and, and away he went. And I ended up by finding one um, in in Winnipeg from a bike shop owner in Winnipeg. Okay. It was 2007. It was like, you know, it was 8,000 bucks. It had like a Thule roof rack and all this stuff. But it was uh, it was that burnt orange color. I'm not a big fan of like, you know, flashy things. So we made plans to change the change the color and we did that. But, you know, it was it, it was a vehicle that uh, that kind of. I never would have uh, thought that I would own. There was actually a point when I was in college with a buddy of mine where we took one for a test drive. And I remember, and he reminds me of this all the time. He's like, you remember when we did that? And you're sitting in there and go, why would anybody buy this? This thing is stupid. You know, fast forward probably a decade later, and I'm one of the biggest proponents for the <laughs> hotel. <laughs> so, and, and still, and still am. I do love that that vehicle still. So, how many years would you say that was for oh, total ownership for the two? Wow. Uh, like, oh, so I think I bought the first one in 2012. So, okay. uh, you know, a good 12 years, a solid 12 years of, of ownership between the two of them. What did you like that was stock? Let's start with that. So yeah, the stock things that I really liked about it um, was like the the cool thing about the the the, the seats folding down. Sure, you know that's that was just cool. It was innovative. It was cool. I actually did like the suicide doors, the way they opened because you had so much access. Um, you know, you push the front seat forward, and if the, if there were no seats in the back, it was it you know super accessible. And also later in life, when we did have kids, um, the element was the only vehicle that I'd ever driven that you could fit a rear facing car seat in. I could fit one behind me and my seat, even with the seat all the way back, it wasn't touching the, the, the seat, the car oh. seat. 
Okay. And there weren't very many vehicles that could do that. Like our the pilot couldn't do it. You know, the flat floor was wicked because um, I windsurf, I ski. So it was great to be able to just like throw stuff in there. Um, the, just the, the volume of space, you know, and, and I really actually, one of the things I really liked was the way that the seats folded up and were just held there with straps, like mechanically, like there was yeah. nothing to break. And if it did, if the strap broke, which I don't know how you would do that, you could just put a new one on. Like it was, it was. It was so low tech and easy to yeah. to deal with any issues that came up that, uh, yeah. yeah, I really appreciated the simplicity. I transitioned from windsurfing to kite surfing. You know, there was times where I would like blow up my kite, shove it in the back of the element, drive it out to the beach, <laughs> drive it right onto the beach because it's all wheel drive. And it was just like, you know, you couldn't get this thing stuck um, and then pull the kite out and, and, and let it go. And that was, you know, that was pretty great. But, oh, yeah. and the, the, uh, the tailgate, the tailgate for me was like, you know, mm. one of the things that I kind of glazed over. I didn't realize what it meant to have a tailgate. Um, but with a like the vehicle having, you know, lower clearance and say a truck, um, being able to put the tailgate down and then either put your ski boots on or, you know, slip your wetsuit on or just sit there and hang out was pretty great. Like it's that's something that, you know, I think underrated. Yeah. Totally, totally underrated. It really well thought out. Um, I mean, there were a few things that, that could have been improved, but yeah, for sure. It was, those were, those would probably be the things that stand out the most. So then what you were saying about impractical, like there's probably stock things all around that are totally impractical. Then sure. But well, how, how would you describe those? Well, I think the, 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 for me, like some of the impractical things were some of the things that I noticed later in life. So the back seats, there's only two seats, right? Because of the way that it folded up. So you couldn't have like, that was one of the reasons we finally did part with it was because you know, we've got two kids, you've got two kids in the back. And if one of their friends needs a ride home, he basically just can't legally do it. <laughs> um, and then uh, the the first generation, which they they did, shoot, they did fix was, you know, the impracticality of having like to take your seatbelt off to let somebody into the in or out of the back. That's uh, right. Was was a bit odd. I think it was a little bit underpowered. Um, you know, a four a four cylinder, I can't remember what the horsepower is on the thing, but it was a little bit underpowered. Um, obviously had like brutal gas mileage for its size as well, because it was, it was shaped like a brick. But you know what? I, I, I got to the point where I just didn't pay attention anymore. You know, I put a lot of heavy stuff in the back and I towed, towed probably heavier than I should have for longer distances and that sort of thing. If it had like maybe, um, a bit of a bigger engine, um, the ability to, um, to tow like a little bit more and have that third, uh, that third seat in the back, um, I think it would have probably lasted a lot longer than, than it had. I think it would yeah. have produced it a lot longer. Um, you know what? My biggest one, and this is, it's, it's tiny for a lot of people. My biggest gripe about it, again, being tiny for other people was um, the fact that it didn't have an exterior uh, temperature gauge. Okay. You know, so the 2005 and then the second generation, I think that went up to like 2008 or something. Uh, so 2003 to 2006, and then I can't remember what, you know, yeah, um, oh, oh, seven, I think the like later months. generation, like the 9, 10, 11, they had a temperature gauge on the, on the console, but <laughs> my, the, the two that I had didn't, I actually, in my second one, I modded that in because it just frustrated me so much. And especially in Canada, it's pretty important because like, you know, it's like, okay, the, the, the road is wet. Is it cold? Like how cold is it? Is it minus four or is it zero or is it one, you know, and like those those all will make a big difference on the way, the way that you drive. So, sure. yeah. And also because of camping, you want to get up in the morning and look and be like, oh, okay, it's cold out, yeah. you know, yeah. or it's not. Okay. Yeah. And what were all the things that you were like, oh, this is like impractical enough or it's lacking a feature enough that I want to mod basically. Yeah. So again, like the, the thing that, that attracted me to the, to the vehicle in the first place was the fact that you could camp in it, like you could lay the seats down and you could, you, you could sleep in it, which I had done in my Subarus in the past. And I was like, well, yeah, but this is built for this. This is going to be way more comfortable. Um, and I think anyone who's ever slept on those, on those seats or tried to sleep on those seats any more than like a couple of hours. And it's brutal, you know, because yeah. it's like broken up. You got the front seat and you got the back seat. There's a bit of a gap and the front seat kind of sits up a little bit and yeah, it's all wonky. And, and, um, you know, so I love the practicality, the idea of that. Um, so that was pretty much the first thing I did was I just like, okay, forget it. I'm just going to build a bed platform for the back yeah. and, and sleep on that. And that 
uh, opened up the practicality for the vehicle more than I had anticipated. I thought it was just going to be a bed, but because it had all the storage in there as well, sure, uh, you know, you could put all your camping gear in there and, you know, slide your skis or your, or my windsurfing gear, whatever underneath. And then you still had this platform on top that, you know, we had dogs, we just had two dogs, we have kids and they could just sit on that while you're driving. And it was, you know, super practical. So, you know, the idea of being able to camp in it was great, but then doing it the way that they wanted you to do it just wasn't, wasn't great. It didn't, yeah. it didn't work as yeah. well as you thought it would. If it was just me in the back of the car, um, you know, oftentimes I would just leave the seats in there and it would just pop up because, you know, when I go skiing, there's a possibility that I might be taking friends out or I might pick up a hitchhiker or something like that. So I would just pop those seats up and I'd leave them. And if it was just me, there was plenty of space. Um, if it was me and the wife and, and the two dogs, then yeah, those seats would, would come out. Most of the time, those, those seats were out. Um, and taking the, the, the bed out was super simple. It was just like four boxes and then a, uh, a platform in the middle. So you could just like, you know, just take it out real quick. Um, and if you were, if I was ever in a situation that I had the bed in the back and we needed the seats, um, to drive somebody home, that whole bed system could actually come apart and then stack up behind the, 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 the rear seats and you could put people in there. I spent many many nights in that in that vehicle i can't remember like it's countless you know like like 60 70 like tons like i don't know um but the biggest thing was like getting out of the thing in the morning right because <laughs> they were smart enough to make it so that you could open the tailgate but you couldn't open the lift gate from the inside and so um the first thing that i did was you know sort of modify a little string so you could like you know open the lift gate from the inside and then open the tailgate the the temperature gauge was definitely one that i felt like i just i just had to have so i did i did put that in i had somebody in Kelowna that was a they were they were a tent manufacturer like a party tent manufacturer make a screen for the back window and you can i had this screen that you could snap up all the way around, close the the tailgate, and then it was it was vented, and that was really great for for one for camping, and you know had a screen on there so the bugs couldn't get in. But then also, if I was going someplace that I couldn't bring the dogs, um, instead of just like you know leaving the windows down this much so the dogs don't don't jump out, I could put this thing up, leave the lift gate up, put the mm -hmm. windows down a little bit, and there was tons of ventilation, um, and that was that was a good one too. I guess the the main one for me was the was the cup holder, um, the rabbit hole for you. Yeah, yeah, a bit of a rabbit hole. Um, you know, I didn't expect it to kind of take off the way it did, but like you know, driving around and like trying, you know, trying to see your where you're going to put your cup way down here, and you know, spilling and then almost smashing into the vehicle in front of you, and you know, for me that was a a major oversight too, and it was cool that they had like you know all that space it was flat floor and you could pass between you know the passenger seat and the driver's seat and um you know having the subwoofer there like all really cool stuff um but if you need to take your eyes off the road to have a sip of coffee that's probably a problem that was a bit of a, a rabbit hole that kind of took off and took a lot of a lot of my a lot of my energy can you go into detail about like kind of that 3d printing journey sure. selling like as a business or whatever and what kind of challenges that was like <laughs> Yeah, sure. As a business, it wasn't really much of a much of a business. It was it was definitely just a hobby thing. But um, I did I made it because I needed it. You know, I wanted it myself. You know, it didn't make any sense that there wasn't one. And you know, I'd come across a couple of solutions for it. Guys like you know having the cup holders that go on your uh, on your air vents, or yeah. um, you know the the F one fifty console hadn't come out yet. People hadn't thought about that, which I think is pretty brilliant. I, I bought a 3D printer back in, geez, I can't remember. It must've been 2014, 15. Um, my buddy was like, yeah, you just buy it and mess around with it. You know, you never know what's going to happen. He's like, you start printing stupid toys and whatever, but the next thing you know, you're like coming up with ideas. And that was probably one of, one of my first ideas. And it was, you know, it was pretty um, basic the way that I came up with it. Cause if you look at the subwoofer, it's got all kinds of different profiles. So it's got like, and that's where that's where the cup holder mounted to, right? So there was below the um, the shifter, you know, the the console went into that, and then in front of that was the subwoofer, and then the subwoofer had had a different profile on it. And I had to make this thing fit. You know, there was no such thing as a as a three D scanner 
you know, even on your iPhone, there was nothing like that. Right. So I just had yet, yeah. over iterations, just be like, Oh, does this fit? Yeah. Sort of. Oh, I can tweak it there. I can do this. And so, you know, eventually I did find the right profile and then, uh, and then started and then printed the first one. The first one had just like, I think there were three inch holes and, uh, you couldn't, you could fit a coffee cup in there, a coffee mug, uh, like a thermos, but just barely. And so then I realized it wasn't big enough because, you know, you want to put bigger, bigger things in there. And, uh, and I initially, you know, after the first one, I basically just threw the model up on, on, uh, Thingiverse, which is like a, a, a file sharing platform. And, you know, it's just like, this is cool. You guys want to use it, go ahead and use it. And then people were contacting me because I think I made, I must've made a video about it. People like, you know, this is cool. Like I can maybe print these up for you if you want. And people started contacting me and initially it was just like, okay, send me 20 bucks on, uh, on PayPal. And then, you know, I'll, I'll print this thing out for you and I'll, and I'll ship it off. Um, and the, the print was like a 20 hour print. Like it was, <laughs> it was a serious print. And you know, if you know anything about 3D printing, there's a lot of things that can go wrong in 20 hours. And yes. there was a lot of just like, you know, going down to the basement in the, in the middle of the night or like before bed or when you wake up in the morning and just seeing like this like rat's nest of, of 3D printing yeah. filament. everywhere. You know, I found that to be very frustrating. But probably the most frustrating part about that was um, finding out. And there were a lot of guys in the community that were helpful with this, finding out that there were other people who were taking my that design from Thingiverse and then printing it themselves and selling them, which, you know, I don't really have a, I didn't really have a problem with people taking them, taking that design and printing it themselves and using it or giving it away. But I mean, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to make this thing work. And if all you're doing is pl- putting it on your 3d printer and then, and then, you know, making money off it, you know, like that, that bugged me. Um, and then also the fact that, you know, you're print, you're printing and selling something that is connected to me. And so when somebody has a problem with it, guess what? They come to me, you know, they're like, oh yeah, that's the guy. Oh, I bought this from you. You know, it's like, oh no, that's not mine. Like I didn't, I didn't print that one. And there was unfortunately quite a bit of that. And uh, even after I'd taken the design off Thingiverse, um, there was, it was, there's still some file sharing going around and people were, were printing it off and modifying it slightly to be like, no, it's not, it's not yours. And I'd be like, well, I can tell it's the one that I designed because the profile where it snaps onto the, uh, to the console is exactly the same. Or they're using different material that might act, not actually be, um, high temperature safe or whatever. Well, that was no, that, so that that's that's definitely part of it and people came back to me and said like well they're melting and the, and mine were melting and that was one of the reasons why i just had to be like okay i can't do this anymore because i can't in good conscience take you know 20 bucks from somebody and then they get this great thing that has like changed has has solved so many problems and they live down in southern texas and the thing just like melts and or or even in southern ontario you know places where it gets hot you leave it parked in the in a parking lot don't think about it and the thing the thing melts and that was another thing like I had tried for so long. Um, and I, I won't say I put like hundreds of hours into making the try to make this work, but I put some some time into trying to print it out of another material that is more temperature safe. It opened up a whole another issue of like, how do you print with this stuff? The um, material is called PETG and it needs to be like bone dry. Like I'm talking like 0% moisture. You have to store it in like a special box to keep the moisture out of it. And over a 20 hour print, the moisture can build up in the filament as it's printing. So then you had to have like another thing to keep it while it was printing. And, and then also the, uh, the print temperatures, the temperatures at which you print it, you know, there was, there was, there were so many, it was a whole nother learning curve. It was almost like starting, starting from scratch. Yeah. And, uh, people still contact me, you know, you know, almost monthly being like, Hey, can you make me one? And I just, I just have to say like, you know, at this point, no, but if I ever do figure out how to, print with uh with petchy um appropriately then then yeah perhaps i can i can send these things out you know when i got the message about the first one melting i remember just being like oh that's not going to be the last one like this is this is going to be this is going to be a thing i think and ultimately if you're like okay the root thing is just that this basic car does not have a basic feature yeah every other car has yeah, right okay feature, then you're just like hmm, maybe 
<laughs> Maybe the solution is not just to keep hacking eventually. <laughs> well, but that, that's kind of the, that's kind of the appeal to uh, the Honda element for right. uh, a lot of people is the fact that you can very easily modify this vehicle to be a camper or um, you know to put in this cup holder or to you know I, I know there's a lot of guys who love to do like street mods with them because there's so much space to put speakers in and you know you can do some really cool things with with ground effects and you know and, and the suicide doors they lend themselves really well to um, a bunch of different things like, like carpet cleaning companies love these things because they can you know get access to the inside and it's just a square box and you know it's and and, and the parts are so ubiquitous because there's hundreds of thousands, you know, there, I think there was like 400,000 of these vehicles made or around 375,000 of these vehicles made. And I'm sure half of those are in a junkyard and you can go and get the parts for them. And it was, it was just like a regular Honda engine. You can, you can get the parts for that. Like, and it's, it, you know, the CRV and the, and the Honda element were, were basically the same. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was, there was, there's tons of reasons why uh, somebody might be, might be attracted to it. Yeah. So then the next question I had was about, uh, moving on from the element sure and so then um kind of what was that process like and um what where did you navigate to you know yeah so um moving on from the element was definitely not a, an easy decision to make um it was kind of a decision that was that was made for me uh family was growing kids are getting bigger our stuff is getting heavier um we've got two dogs again uh and you know, like it just wasn't the vehicle just wasn't working for us um, as it is. So one of the one of the things with a with a growing family is, you know, I'm not sleeping in the back of the element anymore as much as I used to be when I was, you know, in my my late 20s and early 30s. So um, I've actually built a, uh, a utility trailer camper conversion system. So um, it's a six by 12 trailer. It's more, it's not more than 1500 pounds as a camper, but it's much higher and it is higher than the element. So it would be putting way too much strain on that vehicle to, to tow it, uh, any amount, any amount of distance. And in order to be camping with the family in that, that, uh, you know, going to base of ski Hills or, you know, just going into the lake and sleeping out there sort of thing without wanting to bring or having to bring a tent, especially if it's going to rain or something, um, we just couldn't do that with the, with the element anymore. Uh, the element just didn't have the, the towing capacity that we needed to, to do that. Um, the third, the third seat in the back was definitely a limitation. Like I said, if we, if we were somewhere with the kids, um, or going somewhere with the kids and they wanted to bring a friend, like you just, you couldn't bring the element. The, the element was just kind of at that point where, you know, we couldn't, it wasn't being able to sort of just keep up with the family. And my wife has been telling me this for, for years. She's like, it might be time. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's great. It's totally fine. We are at the point now where it's just, it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't practical for us. But it, the, I think the, the, like I said, the decision was made for me. The main decision to get rid of it was because when we moved from Ontario to BC, we would have to have an out of province inspection done. And, you know, uh, the, these, these inspections can be very comprehensive. Like it's got it. They're looking at absolutely everything. So we all know that elements have problems with, uh, with alignment. So, you know, that would, that would have to be something that needs to be done. And it had a smashed windshield, obviously they all have smashed windshields. Um, it had, uh, you know, probably needed the, the brakes done and, you know, um, there was, there was, I was starting to get some exhaust smells in the, in the cabin, which, you know, was easily rectified by just pushing the, uh, circulation button. <laughs> um, but you know, and, and I was racking up all the things start racking. up. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and I was like, well, okay, well, I mean, I could fix all these things and I could, I could, you know, personally, I could fix a lot of them. Um, and some of them I could pay for. And then at that point I was just like, you know, I don't really have the time for this. I don't have time to do this anymore. And it's, it's probably not worth it for me to do this. And I thought, okay, it's, it'd be great if somebody else could, could take this, this vehicle on and, and, you know, allow it to continue. Cause it wasn't a dead vehicle. Like it, the, the one, the, my, my first one was a dead vehicle. This one still had, you know, plenty of life. It hadn't quite broken 300,000 kilometers. 
it uh, you know it was still solid. Um, like I said, I because it was that burnt orange, I didn't want the burnt orange, so I actually plasti dipped it. I and in in my uh, in my garage, which was yeah, pretty pretty straightforward process that you have the space to do it and the time. It's still technically an orange vehicle on registration, <laughs> but it's now green. And you know the way I was getting around that was it never became an issue. But like if someone said if I ever got pulled over and said, well, it says it's orange, but it's green, I'd be like, yeah, but it's it's a temporary. Yeah. Paint. Like I. I you know, I could change it tomorrow to blue. What do I have to like change it every time I do? This? So, yeah, yeah, it was, you know, it, it was um, a difficult sort of drawn out decision, but it it needed to be made. It needed to be done. And, I, and I'm hoping I'm really looking forward to seeing it on the road again. Yeah. Uh, and seeing somebody somebody driving it and knowing that somebody else is uh, is is getting more adventures out of it i just i wouldn't have been able to you know wouldn't have been worth my time to go through all the um all the all the stuff that it needed to needed to be done to get it on back on the road and stay on the road so yeah so how excessive does the passion to keep that car start to verge on insane it's like that's right that's right yeah it wasn't it wasn't practical it wasn't practical to continue um to continue it like it just it just was was going to cost more than it was worth for me and the time and uh and yeah yeah so it was it was time to let it go so then now the 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 stable of cars that you have that meets your needs what does that look like because obviously some people would like to say oh elements are are all there is to life whatever but like obviously if you're a car guy you could have other options that meet your needs right yeah, I'm I'm not a I'm not a super huge car guy. Um and I and I'm definitely you know I, I am looking That's what for, element people say, right? Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're an element person, you're not a car person. Um and I'm not I'm not a uh I'm not looking for a vehicle for any other reason than it needs to just suit my needs. Like it needs to be able to do the things that I that I need it to do. Also don't like to spend a lot of money on vehicles. Uh, our other vehicle now is um, is the Ionic Five, which is a fully electric, which oh, okay. is a really great vehicle, um, yeah. and it's got and it has its own limitations as well. You know, especially with towing, you know, the thing can can tow about two hundred kilometers. Like the, its range is five hundred kilometers, but you put a, a trailer on it and it goes like around the block. Um, so we needed something that could that could tow. We needed something that could fit um, our whole family in, including the dogs um we we needed uh we live in in bc we live in the mountains so we need to have something we would really like to and i would say is a need that we have all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive um a little bit higher clearance was was important not that the elements clearance was ever too low it was totally fine um and uh, so we ended up uh you know, and I and I wasn't being like I'm going to look for. I'm not going to pigeon my whole pigeonhole myself and be like I'm going to look for this vehicle, and I, that's the only thing I'm going to go for. Um, but uh, I ended up by now we have a, uh, a Honda Ridgeline, which is yeah. Well, it's a, first or second generation. It's the first generation. Oh, okay. So it's yeah. a 2008, and I mean I remember it's same thing, same thing. Like the first time I saw, it, like you see these things rolling around, it's like. What, what what is that? It's not a truck. Like it's got this weird slopey back thing, and like you know, it's a unibody. Like what 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 is Honda thinking? Like they're they're this is the dumbest vehicle ever. And I was out for uh, drinks with a buddy one night, and the bartender was saying that he had one, and I was like, "You've got what? What a stupid vehicle!" And he's like, "No, dude, that's what I thought." And he was telling me about all the features on it. Um, and you know, going back to like the practicality of the Honda engineering, just like you know, totally thinking out of the box. You know, like the tailgate that not only drops down but also like swings Swing out. Yeah. You know, like that's cool. And now it's stock in the first gen. Yeah. Is oh, it? Is it stock wow. in the second gen? I, I think it's stock in the second gen too. But I thought that was a new feature in the second gen. But no, wow, no, gen. that was like yeah. And then and then that, that that there was like a compartment under the truck bed as well. That's like. It's huge. Like you can, you could stash. Like I know of guys who have used that the um, fridge. Basically, it's like you just put your drinks there, or yeah, tools yeah, tailgating or... parties. Like that's their cooler. You know, yeah. um, I mean, With there's some rain practicality plug. about it because you have to have an empty bed to be able to use it. <laughs> oh, I see. And, yeah, yeah. But then the other thing, this and this, this one kind of goes back to the whole cup holder thing. The other thing that's like, you know, I I think everybody when they get a new vehicle, like new to them or new, the bat, like I, this maybe it's a guy thing. I don't know. Maybe women like to do it too, but like is like you know finding out those cool little secret compartments. You know, like the elements got that one up up here where you can like put. You're supposed to be able to put your gloves in there so they can drive. And one just 
I just stuff my receipts in there and then your compact you know, like, discs. Yeah. 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 Oh, is that what it, yeah. Compact discs too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then like, you know, there was the glove box and then that tray and all that stuff. And it was like, it was, you know, oh, there was that little like coin holder at the bottom like on the, on the, by your left knee, knee there. But the, the pile or the uh, um, ridge line has like the craziest amount of, of cool little spots, like stash things. But the thing that I appreciated the most was it's got a center console that has cup holders like right there, right where you need them. But then you can actually, there's like a little pinch and you can like move that center console forward and back. So you can, you can, you can actually pass between the driver's seat and the passenger seat very easily. If you just move that console back, Um, there's tons of storage space underneath. And uh, yeah, so that for me, I I really appreciated that because it was like, finally this thing, like I have a place to put my coffee and not have to worry about driving off the road and spending or spending hours upon hours trying to design this <laughs> this workaround yeah. for that so the so, ridge yeah. line first generation almost you're you're making it sound like the element makes sense 2.0 kind of thing like yeah like, yeah and i mean oh, i think the the one thing that i would say it it lacks um as far as that practicality thing to make it similar to the element would be you know if you could put a truck cap on it which you can if you if you could put a truck cap on it but then also had a way to like pass through between the the cabin and the cap then for me that would be like yeah this is the best vehicle ever yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's kind of the the journey for you yeah yeah sounds like uh you found your next uh just what works you know in the end the element worked for a time and then yeah now- it did ridge line yeah. is what works for now too so that's exactly right yeah yeah cool so. well thanks for sharing the stories this is yeah no worries <laughs>